So LCK playoffs started up the other day, a couple days ago now, and DK pretty soundly beat uh, Fear X uh, three games to one, and T1 beat uh, KT Rolster. I believe that series was also 3-1. So I would say these were pretty expected results. Maybe people expected a little more out of KT, uh, especially with T1 faltering a little bit toward the end of the season. But largely, uh, taking a look at the bracket now, which I'll show on screen here, these are the top four teams in the LCK that are like really good. And it's got me thinking that the LCK is probably gonna win Worlds this year. I'm pretty confident in that. Uh, primarily because the LPL is just kind of coin flippy and there are s like too many good teams in that region. Uh, really anyone can can win that region and the LPL just, you know, teams are insane one game and run it down the next game. I feel like uh, LCK teams are much more consistent in their play, even if they don't have as high highs mechanically. I think they just have a better grasp on macro and they're not as coin flippy. Uh, so I think in that sense, uh, in terms of Eastern teams, LCK definitely has the edge there. Obviously, Europe is just complete trash, a joke region. Um, honestly, I do think that Team Liquid could, could uh, you know, challenge some of these Eastern teams, but I'm not expecting them to win Worlds or anything, so I won't really put them as a legit contender, but I do think Team Liquid will probably make quarterfinals if they continue to perform like they have been. Anyways, with all that said, when we get down to the top four in LCK, which we're at right now with Genji, uh, taking on DK and uh, HLE taking on T1, these all four of these teams have the potential to straight up win worlds. And that's honestly kind of scary as a Western fan, um, but all four of these teams have the capability to be insanely good. Obviously, Gen G has been dominant the entire year, won MSI pretty, pretty easily, honestly. And they went, uh, what was it, 16 or 17 and one in the regular season here. DK has, has looked really solid the entire split. Same with HLE, and T1 has been ramping up a little bit. Uh, their last series versus KT looked much better, and their drafts in that series were pretty solid. So if they continue to improve and get back into form, who knows what they can do in this playoffs. And it's still, all just got me thinking, like with all this talk about um, in recent years about how the gap between East and West is expanding in terms of international competition, it's just really interesting because I feel like uh, a little while ago I was feeling like this year could be the year where the West really does something because G2 is re looking really strong, had a good MSI performance, and Fnatic has also been looking much better after their slump uh, at the EWC. So the, those two teams were looking decent, and then the top three in NA with Liquid, FlyQuest, and C9 also have international potential, but I'm looking at this grouping from LCK and I'm just like, holy crap, man, these teams are all insanely good. And I would not be surprised, quite honestly, if these top four teams from LCK are just the world semifinals matchups. I would not be surprised at all if there are all four semifinal slots are LCK, there's no LPL and no Western teams in that, in those semifinal matchups. And, uh, you know, I hope that doesn't happen. I hope there's more diversity and more, um, you know, cross-region matchups in, in the world's knockout stage. Um, but, you know, obviously, who knows what's actually going to happen. Uh, anything can happen at Worlds. There have been some crazy stories, especially in the last couple of years at that tournament, and it's always really exciting to find out who's going to win, who's going to upset who, who's going to fall apart and have a big collapse. Um, but right now, from where I'm looking, man, LCK is looking freaking scary, and I think that this region should be by far and away the favorite to win. Uh, the world's 2024 championship. Uh, something else I want to talk about is the way that the current meta is in terms of draft, I think also favors the LCK. You know, in years past, um, the LCK was always known as a region as, you know, the slow region, the methodical region. Play for scaling, play for macro team fights. Uh, compare that to the LPL where they're always like super hectic, super aggressive, and always fighting in the early and mid game. LCK was always the quote unquote slow region. And I think we've kind of seen a return to that, mostly due to the meta and the way it is. If you just take a look at DK's, er, DK's team comp here, it's full scaling. We have we have Nasus mid lane, we have friggin' Smolder and Ivern. There's pretty much hard scaling on every team, every game, and every draft. Uh, even on uh, Fox's comp, they have Orn, Azir, Ash, Seraphine, ridiculously good scaling there as well. So just the way the meta is right now, especially with how 
dominant marksmen have been this split um, across the board in bot lane and mid lane, um, even expanding into top lane a little bit, especially in LCK. I think that this kind of drafting and this kind of meta really favors Korea as a region because they're used to that, you know, more standard scaling methodical approach to the game. And when the game isn't super snowball and isn't super hectic and aggressive early, I feel like the LPL doesn't really have a whole lot of direction. I might be totally wrong in that, but I feel like they depend on their, you know, flippy fights early game to kind of get snowballing and win from there. Whereas uh, LCK, and especially this is evident through Gen G's gameplay um, at MSI and, and their season, that they're, this region is much more comfortable playing, uh, you know, hard for scaling, uh, kind of just, you know, dragon fights, objective fights, uh, heavy through side lane and macro play, and it's just generally a slower game in a lot of these LCK games. Um, so it's going to be really interesting to see the, the world's meta de uh, development and how it evolves throughout the tournament. Obviously, we have a pretty big patch coming up before the, the tournament starts, which hopefully, I'm really hoping it's going to be pretty significant and will bring some kind of change, some kind of spice to the meta, um, because with the way the jungle and the ADC marksman meta has been currently in this season, it's getting pretty stale to watch and pretty boring as a viewer. And honestly, I bet it's pr getting pretty boring to play as well. Um, so I hope there's some kind of evolution there with the world's patch in terms of, you know, maybe getting marksmen out of solo lanes, uh, getting some more, uh, maybe AD fighters, more diversity in jungle picks, um, you know, just getting more creativity and champ select in the meta. Obviously, a lot of that comes down to willingness of the pro teams, but a lot of it also comes down to what's strong in the current competitive meta. Uh, largely, that has been marksmen this season. Anyways, that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about. Overall, I'm like, I'm really scared of the LCK as a Western fan and someone who is really hoping that the West can challenge uh, Eastern teams in, in Worlds 2024. Uh, it's not looking good for us. Uh, you know, I think Team Liquid is by far the best Western team, uh, which is honestly nice to say, even though I'm not a huge Liquid fan in terms of international competition, I'm a North America fan first. Uh, so hopefully TL can do something good in Worlds. Um, but overall, I feel like the West is getting pretty doomed because G2 has fallen apart, Fnatic is inconsistent and has proven that their uh, international performances are very lackluster, and uh, Cloud9's kind of fallen apart, and FlyQuest I just don't think is quite at that level. So Team Liquid is pretty much the last hope of, West, of the West in my opinion. Outside that, uh, it's pretty much going to be Korea and China, what we're all used to, and uh, what we've all been enjoying for, you know, years and years in Pro League of Legends. Um, so with DK, with HLE, with Genji, with T1, assuming those are the four that get to Worlds for Korea, uh, which I think most people are expecting at this point, I think they get four World spots. Uh, I might be mistaken, and maybe they only get three, but I'm pretty sure they get four. And assuming those four teams go, uh, Korea is going to be pretty dominant, and I think that that is a pretty safe expectation heading into Worlds. Let me know what you guys think about Korea and uh, each region heading into the World Championship this year. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.